In this video, we are going to discuss the Actor Classes browser, which is a key browser for populating your level with the kind of things that you need, like weapons, like vehicles, like certain types of lights, and all sorts of other different features that you will want that you're generally not going to be able to find in the generic browser. Let's begin by opening this up. We'll go under View, Browser Windows, and open up Actor Classes. And here you go. So what do you see when you first open this up? First, you get a checkbox that says Use Actor as Parent. This basically just determines whether or not you want to see the actor group as the, the uh, main key uh, class from which right. everything derives. If you turn this off, you can actually see the object class, which I don't think there's really any reason to show in our case. Right, unless you're trying to investigate some programming aspect, something behind the scenes. Generally, as far as level design is concerned, everything useful will descend from actor. That's right. And then you have placeable classes only. If you turn this off, you can actually see all of the different uh, actors available, and not all of these are placeable in your map. As a level designer, in general, you are really only concerned with placeable actors, so it's probably a good idea to leave this on most of the time. Now, down at the very, uh, well, actually, let's just go straight down underneath this. We have the hierarchical list of all of the different uh, actors that are deriving from the actor class, and this pretty much consumes or uh, encompasses everything that we will want to place in our map. Uh, everything that we would want is buried somewhere within this hierarchy, and we'll talk more about finding those things here in just a moment. Underneath this, we have a list of all of the different packages that are currently loaded in, because really what this uh, list is showing are the actors that have been loaded in that are within these packages. Now, as you open up more packages, this list could theoretically expand, such as maybe you download a package for some sort of game mod that adds some new actors to the game. That uh, package would appear in this list, and then you could see those actors within this uh, hierarchy. All right, so now let's take a look at how to find some of the actors that we would want. Logan, what's something that you think we should be able to place? I don't know. We could maybe drop a vehicle into the level. Okay. Which would be interesting. And also point out something more common like a weapon locker. Okay. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start off with a weapon locker because we'll save the vehicle for last. We'll save the cool stuff for the end. So vehicles and weapons both can be found underneath the navigation point listing. So there's navigation point. Now notice something about navigation point. We have it, and you'll notice the, the text is not in bold. We have several other uh, actors listed that are in bold. That is a way to designate actors which are placeable in the level. So in this particular case, we could place a note actor in the level. We could place a material instance actor just by selecting it and then right-clicking and placing it. But we couldn't actually place a navigation point. Instead, we need to click on the small plus sign next to navigation point and see what's within it. And here we see some boldened uh, entries, and these are actors that we could place into the level. Right, momentarily you might be wondering why is it that some of these non-placeable actors even show when the placeable only checkbox is checked. And the reason is, is because while that actor itself is non-placeable, it contains or it, uh, it is the parent of actors that can indeed be placed. Right. So while it is not placeable, it, is, it shows because it is the gateway to finding actors that are placeable. That's right, some of its kids are placeable, or <laughs> children, whatever. So uh, let's move down from here. We wanted to put in a, uh, a weapon locker. So we have the pickup factory. If we go ahead and expand that, you'll see UT Pickup Factory. And we can expand that. Now we start to get into some things that we could actually place. We have the UT Deployable Pickup Factory, which is not exactly what we're looking for. But here we have the UT Weapon Pickup Factory. So we can click on this. And with it selected, we're actually done with the Actor Classes browser. We can close this down. And we've already got a weapon locker here. So let's go to another place in the map, maybe over here next to this door. Or actually, there's a player start right there. So how about right here in front of this generator? We'll right-click, and you can see in our right-click menu, we have Add UT Weapon Pickup Factory here, and boom, there you go. Now, at this point, you could double-click on this uh, actor, expand its properties, and you could choose the type of weapon that's going to be within it. Let's maybe add in, oh, I don't know, the Stinger, because that's a lot of fun. And then uh, we could use this except for one small problem, and that is that it doesn't have a pickup light. So if you uh, wanted to add one of those underneath the tools menu, you have the ability to automatically add pickup lights, and that'll add one for you. So at this point, I think we could go ahead and do the whole play from here bit, and let's just see how well this works. Oh, there we go, and there's a stinger floating right above it, and bink, now we have the stinger minigun. So when we start mowing stuff down. Excellent. So uh, there's a quick look at placing a weapon into your map. Let's close out our actor properties window because we don't need that. And we'll take a look at adding some other things as well. Go back under view, browser windows, and actor classes. Oh, by the way, you don't necessarily have to do that. You could just open up the generic browser from the toolbar and jump over to the actor classes tab, whatever appeals to you the most. 
So let's go back under navigation point. Now you might be wondering, why are things like weapons located under the navigation point class? Logan, do you want to share with us why that is? Well, the reason that is is uh, partially for uh, AI navigation reasons, and also the fact that we placed a weapon factory more than a weapon itself. That's we placed true. A point at which, or a point that designates a weapon spawn, and it's a point that's useful for navigation because you want your AI elements, your bots, to be able to find things like weapon pickups. Therefore, they all technically share navigation in common. They all have to play a part in this network, or this navigation network. That's right. And you'll notice that under the navigation point uh, class, we have a lot of things that your AI is going to need to be able to find. Things like teleporters, defense points, uh, path nodes, which they use to actually run around, ladders, all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, so let's go back uh, underneath our pickup factory. And let's expand pickup factory. Well, we already did that, so let's go ahead and close that up. I guess we should do a vehicle now. Yeah, that'd be fun. So uh, let's expand UT Vehicle Factory, and there's uh, all of the vehicles that are available to us. I'm going to grab the Scorpion, just because it's cool, and we'll right-click here on the floor and choose Add UT Vehicle Factory Scorpion here, and there's a Scorpion. It appears in our map. So let's close this down, and I'll just go ahead and play the map from here. Give this a second to load in, and da -da -da -da, we have a Scorpion. So let's go ahead and hit E and jump into it. And we can start driving it around. Let's see if I can get it through the doorway here. I, I, it's going to be tricky. Uh, maybe. It's going to be tricky. Oh, I don't think we're going to be able to do it. Oh, we're stuck. And we're getting hurt. Oh, we're on our side. And that's the end of that. So let's go ahead and escape out of there. So there's a quick look at the Actor Classes browser. Again, it'd probably be a really good idea for you to play with it for a little while, expand certain classes, and start really digging around and getting an idea of where the things that uh, you really want to be able to place are located. And uh, then there's also a look at placing those in the level. So that is going to wrap things up for this video.